In this movie we'll show you how we can uh, machine the profile that we created previously from a DXF drawing. So we're still in the CAD system now and this is the profile that we created. So we'll save this drawing away and we'll take it through into the machining software. So to do that we go to machining, turning module so we're coming out of the CAD system into the lathe software. So the first thing to do is to go through the machine setup. This is where we can enter a program ID or a program part number. Uh, the NC program number is normally the number associated with the top of the G code file. We need to set up our tool change positions for either a rear or a front turret. The maximum spindle speed, if we have constant surface speed, then we can set the maximum here. The clearance distance used in CAN cycles, this is the global default. We can change on each individual machining operation. On most uh, modern machines, the spindle and the coolant are switched off before a tool change, but if you want them, uh, if you need to set them manually, then you can switch them off here. So the only thing that gets passed through from that DXF file is the profile that we created. So the thing to do is to check that the date and position is where you expect it to be, and in this case it is on the far right of the job. Uh, the screen layout, on the right hand side we have the status panel. This is where the, sh the position of the tool will be shown, the current tool in use and the estimated cycle time. The main graphics area is where we'll see the geometry and the tools moving. And on the left hand side we have windows for geometry. In this case we only have one profile. Tooling definitions are the tools that we'll be using within this job and the program operations here. So those are both empty at the moment until I start to uh, fill them out with some instructions. So to do that I use the bottom toolbar here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll define a standard turning tool. So we need to choose the tool type and then with that tool type we need to set up the parameters. So the first thing to do is to set up the approach and where the turret, where the tool is mounted on the front or rear turret. It won't make any difference as to how we created the profile, whether it's above the center line or below the center line. Uh, we can always use either the front or the rear turret or a tool post. The uh, tools here, if we change the tip radius for instance, then the X and Z offset registers get adjusted to suit. The angles of the tool, the, for a turning tool, the primary angle is measured from the 3 o'clock position, which is 0, round to the primary cutting edge here, which is this one just off vertical. So if you've got a 5 degree clearance, say something like a CNMG tip, then the angle from there round to the uh, 0 is 85 degrees. The included angle is measured from there backwards to there. So if we've got 5 degrees there, the included angle is 80. So that's setting up the tool. This is the tool number here and the tool description. So that's defined the tool. Now we need to select that for use. So we use select tool. There is only one tool available, so that's the one we'll choose. The spindle control <coughs> can either be constant spindle speed or constant surface speed. So if we want to switch constant surface speed on and we set up the value, uh, this will either be in meters per minute or in feet per minute, depending on the units. Uh, the spindle direction will either be clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on your, how your tools are mounted. And the feed rate can be output as feed per minute or feed per rev. If you need to switch the coolant on for this tool, then check that box there. So that's got the tool selected so now I can machine uh, that shape so we'll start off with just a simple turning operation so the first thing it needs is the cycle limit so these are the maximum and minimum sizes of where I want that tool to move so I can type in the sizes or I can simply pick from the screen using the select buttons here so this is the top right corner of a rectangle and 
this is the bottom left corner of that rectangle. Now the machine won't ever reach that back face because the profile will stop it. If you want to leave a finishing allowance on there we can do and this is where we set the cut depth. So this is an external turning cycle so if we click OK leave all the other options as they are then we get the center line of the tool shown. If we animate the tool and run the job here the red dashed lines are rapid and the blue lines are feed rate. So that machines as far as it's able to get with the tool geometry that we've given it. If we don't want it to go into the undercuts here then we can switch that off via the option under the turn cycle. So the next thing we'll do is we'll clear out this area here using a button tool. So we'll define a button tool. This time can be a 6mm uh, radius. We'll select that tool for use. Set the spindle speed and the feed rate for that tool. And now we'll do a facing cycle which is moving towards the center line. So again we need to give it the two corners of the rectangle where I want that tool to move within. These are the cycle limits. If I need to leave a finishing allowance, I can do that here. And I set the cut depth there. Okay, so that's roughed out that area. Uh, now we could use that same tool to machine the, um, the rest of that shape. Um, one of the options that we've got is to show the spans that go to make up that profile. A span is a line or an arc segment. To see those, I go to the Options button on the top toolbar here, and I switch on Number Spans. So now we can see the span numbering that's been applied to that profile. So we can use that span numbering to um, machine that shape. So we could do a profile turning operation and we'll leave the defaults as they are for approach and runoff. We're machining in the forward direction but under the options tab here I'll set the start span number to 2 and the end span number to 4. Let me click OK and that tool only machines between those two spans. Uh, so it's put an arc approach and an arc runoff. Now we could machine from number 9 round to number 5 but before we do that we need to move the tool up out of the way here so that it approaches there from a safe position. So to do that we use go to and I can type in the commands on the values for where I want it to be or I can just indicate it with the cursor and we can make that happen at rapid. So that just moves the tool out of the way so that when I now do the next profile turning operation I'm going to machine in the reverse direction and the options are to go from 5 to 9. I don't need to reverse the span numbers because I've already checked the box machine in the reverse direction. So that machine's there. So if that was all I wanted to do on that job, I'd need to move the tool back to its home position. So I use go to, send tool to the home position, but move in the X axis first. Okay, so that's completed that job. If I switch into center line mode and just run it again, you can see the complete tool path. And to post process that, I use post process here and then choose the post processor that I want to use. This is a standard FANUC control. What happens then is it runs through the program again and then produces the G-code file and then opens another window at the bottom. And that's the G-code file which is ready to run on your machine.
So that shows you how we can import a DXF file starting off in the first video, create the profiles for turning and then bring that uh, profile into the turning software and machine it.